I've covered this topic uh, at least once before, but I thought I would take an opportunity to uh, revisit it because it just happens to be something that I'm working on uh, for one of my clients today. Yesterday, I went to their offices and uh, we recorded one of the volunteers that's helping us build this e-learning course uh, speak in a different language than what I'm capable of speaking. Um, in this case, because I'm Canadian and being a Canadian e-learning instructional designer has its unique challenges, one of which is the Official Languages Act. Here in Canada, you're required to provide e-learning in both English and in French Canadian. So that's what we've done here today. So we've gone in, we've recorded our volunteer who is a native French Canadian speaker and uh, not by any means a professional voice talent, but uh, certainly we thank her for her contribution as well. But now it's my job to go back with the original recording and do what I can to uh, eliminate some of the problem areas that, that show up when you make recordings of narration. Electronic uh, text-to-speech is a great alternative, but one of the downsides is it's not very human. So in this case, we have a nice human recording, um, and you know there's a couple of challenges that I face as the instructional designer developer. The first challenge is that I don't speak, nor do I understand French very well. I can pick up words here and there, and I sort of understand some of the meaning just because I am Canadian, but for the most part, I am not fluent at all. So what I have to really rely on is, first of all, I'm going to edit this recording using Adobe Audition. Uh, I need to, first of all, compare it with the, the, the text that I have, and phonetically I can sort of follow along and see if it is the right recording. Uh, saying the right sentence. I got to watch for times when my uh, my person who volunteered to do the narration, um, you know, makes mistakes and has to start over that sentence. You know, we've tried to indicate those in the recording as best we can. But the first step in the process is to open up this recording in Adobe Audition. This is done through a process that's commonly referred to as round tripping, because if I open it from within Adobe Captivate, and then I close it in Adobe Audition, it should return and save what changes we've made to the files that are within the library of this course. So first of all, let's find this audio file within the library. I'm gonna right click on it, click on find in the library or control B. And sometimes that have to have to do that twice. Don't know why. So there's my recording. Now it opens up the library and I can see where that recording is and I can press this edit icon which is like a little pencil and that should open up audition for me now if it doesn't open audition in your case it might be that you don't have audition um, or it could be that you've never opened audition before and it doesn't know that it's installed on your system so you may have to navigate to select o Adobe audition Alternatively, you could be using a different piece of, of audio editing software, in which case you'd have to select that. Um, so here's the recording. Let's listen to a little bit of it and see what we've got. So we're doing slide 10. Voici une liste de plusieurs des répercussions les plus courantes qu'ont la discrimination et le harcèlement sur un milieu de travail empreint de respect. Cliquez sur chaque répercussion pour en savoir plus. So you may not be able to hear this in the YouTube video, but um, what I'm picking up by listening to this, first of all, you heard my voice at the beginning of the recording offering her some instruction. And uh, I am also hearing a lot of background noise in the recording. And background noise is just part of having microphones and picking up the real world. So our first task or one of our first tasks will be to eliminate that noise. The other thing too is that what I'm hearing is that uh, between um, the pauses in her sentences and the spaces between the sentences, there are breaths, just as I'm probably making breath sounds as I record right now. Of course, now you'll be hyper aware of that. Uh, I'm going to do my best to get rid of those. Um, I don't mind them in my YouTube channel because it's just very normal, but obviously in a very professional e-learning course that a client is paying a lot of money for, I want to make sure that it's as perfect as possible. 
So the very first thing I need to do as a English speaker is I'm just going to compare that recording. Now, again, I'm not fluent. I'm not even close to fluent in, in French. Uh, so the best I can do is take a look at the text. Now, I happen to already have my closed captioning on the slide notes section. So I'm going to look very closely at what phonetically is being said. Again, I don't understand it, uh, but I can look for uh, where those breaks should be. There's only three sentences here, so it shouldn't be too bad. So I would listen and play this back at the same time. Um, sometimes what happens is that she'll record a sentence, make a mistake, and then start that sentence over again. So you're going to watch, watch for those as well, because you're going to need to eliminate the previous attempt at that sentence. Uh, I don't think she's done that in this particular case, but let's just listen to it once more and see. Okay, so she didn't make any mistakes there, uh, which is good. So I think we're go we're good to go ahead and edit this. Uh, just for sound quality and so forth. I should, shouldn't have to remove anything other than my instruction at the beginning. So the very first thing I like to do is under the favorites drop down menu, I like to hit repair DC offset. And I'm not an audio engineer, but what I can tell you is that sometimes when you take audio recordings that were recorded in an application other than Adobe Audition, they might be slightly out of sync with the waveform graph that you see on your screen here. Uh, and if the absolute zero point, which is down the middle here, isn't aligned with the waveform, you may have problems when it comes to doing things like noise reduction, for example. So I'm going to first of all do that. That will select the whole file and uh, adjust for that if it, if it needs to. The next thing I need to do is I need to find a sample of the room background noise. And usually the beginning or the end, there's just some blank recording space there. So I'm going to select some of that space right here. And then I'm going to use a feature called noise reduction restoration. And we'll go into that sub menu and select noise reduction process. Alternatively, you can press control shift P. And that's going to open up this additional window right here. Now, because I've selected a, a blank spot, I'm going to use this button here to capture a noise print. And this is just going to look for the characteristics of the noise that's in that particular area. Now, it's showing me this grid here. And this grid is a representation of frequencies down across the bottom here. Down here on the left-hand side is the very low frequencies, the bass, if you will. And up here are the high frequencies, the higher pitch sounds. And you can adjust this line, but I find that its selection is usually quite good. So the very first thing I want to do, I can select the entire file and then hear what that sounds like. So we're doing slide 10. Mm -hmm. Voici une liste de plusieurs des répercussions les plus courantes qu'ont la discrimination et la... So I can apply this if I'm happy with the amount of noise reduction and you can do things like you can adjust the amount of noise reduction and you can, uh, or the type of noise reduction and then reduce by however many decibels uh, that you want to lower it by. I find that generally around 90, 95% is good and about 100 decibels is fine. You could probably get away with less. Uh, you'll find if you go 100% and 100 decibels, you may find that it affects the quality of the speech. So you might have to experiment with your own situation, but this is what seems to work well for me. So I'm going to hit apply and that's going to reduce the noise. Now in particular, it's, you know, great concern is the space between um, sentences and, and between the things that I want in the recording. Um, but it also gets in between the waveforms, other places where you probably wouldn't be able to do that yourself. But there's still some remnants of things that, you know, it doesn't know that are noise, like my voice isn't necessary for this recording at all. 
So I'm going to select that area, which is the, just the first couple of seconds here. And I'm going to right click on this and select silence. Now I've had the opportunity to go ahead and um, assign my own shortcut key because this is a, a feature that I use very frequently. Uh, and by default, silence doesn't have its own shortcut key. So I've assigned um, uh, N to be my shortcut key for silence. You can Google how that's done. You know, you can assign shortcut key Adobe Audition and it will show you how to do that. But uh, I'm going to make, I'm going to make this silent here and we'll just take a look here. So that's a nice quiet part. Now, through my own experimentation, what I have found is that the space between a sentence that sounds most natural is about half a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select in this silence area here about half a second worth of audio. That's about there. You can see the duration down here of the selection, uh, selection view area. And if I copy that, I can now paste that half second of silence between all those sentences. I just find that this is one of the easiest ways to deal with this. You could cut out, let's say there's two seconds of silence. You want it to be half a second. You could select one and a half seconds and cut it out. But I find it easier just to copy that half second into my clipboard and just hit control V to replace that really long amount of noise. Uh, or silence in this case. And then I can just listen to the recording and find the next space between sentences. Voici une liste de plusieurs des répercussions les plus courantes qu'ont la discrimination et le harcèlement sur un milieu de travail empreint de respect. Click. So there's another sentence between, uh, there's another space between the sentences. So again, this is actually, if I, sh if I select that space, uh, it's actually 0.8 second. So it's a little long. And the other thing about it too, if you notice down here in the spectral area, I think that's what you call this, the spectral pitch display, you'll see that there's some noise there. And that noise is her taking a breath. And it's a good opportunity to get rid of that at the same time. So I'm just going to paste again that half second of silence right over top of it and continue playing this recording. So, so there's another one. Again, just repeat that process. And we'll just continue from there. Entièrement explorer cette page, cliquez sur la flèche de droite pour vérifier les connaissances que vous avez acquises pendant cette leçon. And I can do the very same thing right at the end of the recording because there's uh, presently about uh, two seconds worth of so-called silence there. So I'll just paste in my half second of silence. I have a nice short recording. The other thing I've found is that the pauses that we do inside of a sentence, you know, because we have to take a breath or because uh, there is literally a comma at that particular point, those are about a quarter second long and they sound natural at about a quarter second. So in this case here, I'm going to select about a quarter second worth of audio of blank silence, if you will. So right about there, that's uh, 0.25 seconds. So I'm going to copy that and that's going to supplant my previous half second. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for those pauses in the middle of the sentence, where especially the ones where there's a breath and uh, try and eliminate those. So let's listen to the recording once more. Voici une liste de plusieurs des répercussions les plus courantes qu'ont la discrimination et le harcèlement sur un milieu de travail empreint de respect. Cliquez sur chaque répercussion pour en savoir plus. Après avoir entièrement exploré cette page, cliquez sur la flèche de droite pour vérifier les... So there's one right there. Um, she's pretty good. She didn't, uh, didn't do too many of those in the first couple sentences. So again, this should tighten up the recording a little bit and also eliminate that sound of breath. Les connaissances que vous avez acquises pendant cette leçon. Voici une liste de plusieurs des répercussions les plus courantes qu'ont la discrimination et le harcèlement sur un milieu de travail empreint de respect. Cliquez sur chaque répercussion pour en savoir plus. Après avoir entièrement exploré cette page, cliquez sur la flèche de droite pour vérifier les connaissances que vous avez acquises pendant cette leçon. 
So I'm pretty happy with that. That sounds like a, a really good recording to me. Again, if I just exit from Adobe Audition, uh, this should be able to round trip back to Adobe Captivate and it will update this waveform that you see here and it's associated with this slide and I can just keep going with the rest of my project doing one slide at a time. Guys, if you like this uh, video, if you found it helpful, please share it with your colleagues. Um, you know, if you need help on your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My goal is to always focus on your business goals uh, rather than just making something pretty or wonderful or exciting. Um, make sure, of course, that you also check out my Twitter feed. Uh, my Twitter handle is Paul Wilson LD. And you can also go to my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.